right guys welcome back and we're looking at question 11 which is very interesting and a little bit different from the ones that we've been looking at before now when you work in this question here clearly we're multiplying three uh, terms x minus one uh, x minus one here x minus three and two and the recommendation is that you multiply the back two first and leave this one at the end so again equal sign for steps so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting the square brackets uh, to indicate that I'm focusing on expanding or multiplying the back two first uh, before we proceed to multiply whatever we've got by two. So this is going to be two here. And the reason why I'm using square brackets is because you don't normally see uh, two parentheses. Together, these are parentheses. Uh, so you don't normally see two parentheses back to back. So square bracket and then parentheses, okay? So positive x times x here is x squared. Positive x times minus 3 is minus 3x. Negative 1 times x is negative x. And negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. So I've expanded the back two uh, brackets and now I'm going to simplify it. So what I have here is there's no term inside here that has a x squared. So I'm putting that back. And you owe three xylophones and you owe one xylophone, which means in total you own four xylophones. And the plus three comes back here. Very, very, very straightforward and very simple. Now that we've simplified this, all we need to do now is multiply everything inside here by the two. So positive 2 times positive x squared is 2x squared. Positive 2 times negative 4x is negative 8x. And positive 2 times positive 3 is positive 6. And you can clearly see that that has been simplified. There is nothing further to do to the problem. And this will give you full marks. Very, very straightforward. So again, you have 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. So what you need to focus on is working on the 2 at the back. Expand those, then simplify, and whatever you get, just multiply everything there by the two, and this is what you should end up with. Very, very straightforward. Now, let's take a look at this question here. All right, so in this particular case, we have product of three brackets here. So we have three brackets, and again, the recommendation is just to focus on expanding and simplifying the, the two at the back first, and then afterwards, we multiply by this guy. So again, I'm just going to put this back here and focus on expanding the two at the back of the problem. That's the recommendation here. So I'm going to put this back, 2x plus 1, and then go ahead now with the expansion. Positive x times positive x is x squared. Positive x times negative 1 is negative x. Positive 3 times x is positive 3x. And positive 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So we can go ahead, put this back, and then simplify here. There's no term in here with a, with a squared, so we're going to put back x squared. You owe one xylophone. Now, the positive 3x implies that you have three xylophones Let's say you have three xylophones at home. That's what you own. And you owe one. So when that person comes to the one that you owe them, you're going to take that from the three that you have and you're going to, left, you're going to be left with two xylophones. Simple as that. Now, what we're going to be doing here is very simple. We are going to take this guy and multiply everybody here by the 2x. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And notice that the 2x is positive here. So positive 2x times x squared. So we're multiplying 2x by x squared. We're going to get 2x cubed. Okay? Positive 2x times positive 2x. That gives us 4x squared. And positive 2x times negative 3 gives us negative 6x. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the positive one here and do the same thing. We're multiplying by that, that, and that with positive one. Very, very straightforward. 
So, positive 1 times x squared is positive x squared. Very simple. Positive 1 times 2x is positive 2x. And positive 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So now we go about the business of looking for similar terms or like terms, grouping them together, and proceed to try to simplify this expression here. Now there's no other term inside it. Now it's important to observe that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms present. Now there are no terms with a cube in it, so I'm going to put this back. 2x cubed. Uh, we're going to look for the terms that have 4x squared in it. And what I like to do is just give a little tick off to account for everything that I'm working with. So 4x squared and this is similar. So I'm just going to put these two together. So it's going to be positive 4x squared. And we have plus x squared there. So I'm accounting for those two. And then now I proceed to look to see if there's anything else that's similar. Well, clearly, 6x or negative 6x is similar to positive 2x. So I'm going to put those together as well. So it will be negative 6x plus 2x. And then, of course, what is left is minus 3. Okay? So to complete, we have 2x cubed. 4x squared plus x squared is the same as saying 4x squared plus 1x squared. That is going to give us 5 x squared. Now I have two xylophones at home and I owe six xylophones so I have two xylophones at home because positive indicates what you have and I owe six xylophones so while I'm at home with my two xylophones somebody is coming for their six that I owe them so I have to give them the two and I'm going to be left and, and they're going to I'm going to still owe them four xylophones I put back there minus 3. So that would be the solution to this question here. Again, you can always replay this video as many times as you wish and observe what is happening. Again, we had three brackets. The recommendation is expand and simplify the back two, which is what we did here, expansion, and then we simplify. And then afterwards, you now you multiply the bracket that you had at the front by what you have found. And you take your time and you multiply each of the terms by whatever is in the third bracket. Once you've done that, move on to the next one and multiply again. And you end up with this. Carefully look for the like terms and simplify them, ensuring that you account for all one, two, three, four, five, six terms. And then at the end, you write your final answer. I hope you guys found this video insightful. And I'll see you guys on the next video.